Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A video before tonight's episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So as mentioned, Supergirl is on tonight, and we also got the confirmation that there is going to be a trailer coming out afterwards. Thank God, it's been weeks, so we should have a trailer breakdown video out after later in the day, so look forward to that. But tonight, be sure to stay tuned and watch Supergirl because after that, my review is gonna come out literally right afterwards. But for now, we're going to be going over some of your questions on YouTube, so I posted on the community tab asking for questions to do with Supergirl, The Flash, Superman, Lois, or anything. I think I'm gonna have a Superman Lois video out pretty soon, talking about some season two theories. I'm back in London right now, so I'm gonna be making daily videos so don't go anywhere and watch every single video. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any video ideas that you really want me to talk about, leave them in the comments below, or you can go to the community tab and answer the new post that I put up for our next Q&A video. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the first question. This comes from Marcus Barras on YouTube who asks, will Dreamer turn to the dark side after Nixley tricks her into helping her in the episode called Dreamweaver. So this episode happened and we got the official confirmation. No, Dreamer is not turning bad after Nixley tricked her. Nixley has escaped into the real world. But I like the question and the reason why I bring up the question is, do you think Dreamer could ever turn dark? And the simple answer to that is no. Although she was quite gullible and she was sort of led on by Nixley, she's smart enough to know that she went wrong and she acknowledges it in the episode. So I think there's a very slim chance of Dreamer ever turning bad by the end of this season. Obviously there's a chance that she could return post Supergirl's ending, but we don't know anything regarding that as of right now. But good question Marcus, let's move on to Ambrose Rao's question who asks, what are the powers of Sentinel, aka Alex Danvers, in order for her to help the Flash instead of Kara in Season 8? So, as you all know, Alex doesn't have powers. She is technically a vigilante. She is someone that just goes on the streets. She knows how to fight. She knows how to use a gun. She has, you know, her sort of space gun, I guess you could call it, that shoots out like rays. And so that is literally her power. She doesn't have any superpowers. She is just human. And so, in order for her to help The Flash in the Season 8 crossover of The Flash, she's just going to be showing up as Alex Danvers as her normal self. She's not going to miraculously get any powers or anything. And she's not a replacement of Supergirl. She is just coming over and she's going to be helping out because she is a valuable asset in the Arrowverse. And so, it's not just her instead of Kara, and that's why she's showing up. Like, if you look at all the other characters that have been confirmed for the Flash Season 8 crossover, you can see people like even Mia Smoke. She's showing up, and she's going to be seen alongside Alex, and also you got Ryan Choi. Obviously, there is the instance of Ryan Choi and Ray Palmer, where I think one is going to replace the other, but that is a sort of passing of the mantle thing. In terms of Alex, it's completely different. Or even Mia, for that matter. She's not just a replacement of Green Arrow. She's a completely different hero. But thanks for the question, Ambrose. Okay, so Adam sends in a question, and he says this, I know season 5 is over, but I remember when the leader of... Rama Khan and the others, that being Leviathan, wasn't actually the leader. In fact, there was another leader above Gamine. Will that ever get explained or are they just going to leave it out and forget it? So I've had this question quite a lot, especially over season six since season five ended. You know, in episode one, we had the defeat of Gamine finally. And so Supergirl and the team put Leviathan out of action. But are we going to find out who was in charge of Leviathan? And the simple answer to that is, Nearly 100% we're not going to find out because I think the show is going to gloss over it and I don't think anyone cares enough about Leviathan to be like, oh, we really want to see, like, who was this person in charge of Gamine because really no one liked that story that much. It was a bit uninteresting by the end and I don't think anyone is scrambling for that. Obviously, if it was a really good story and it went unanswered, like, I don't know, some of the bigger questions in the Arrowverse maybe to do with like the flash and crisis in the newspaper of course you're going to get an answer for that and we did get an answer for that but in terms of this this is just going to be a plot point that they're going to gloss over because no one has that much interest in finding out more about leviathan 
but good question. Let's move on. So Marcus Barris sends in another good question. And so if you guys send in very good questions, of course, I'm going to bring up all of them, no matter how many send in. So Marcus says, will Melissa return as Kara slash Supergirl in future episodes or crossovers of The Flash, Superman Lois and other Arrowverse shows as a guest star? We've answered this quite a few times, but as of right now, it doesn't seem like she's going to show up in the Flash Season 8 crossover, because pretty much like a week after Supergirl finished, I think she was probably packing up from her apartment in Vancouver. Obviously, she'd been living there for a long time since Supergirl was in Season 2 when the show moved up to Vancouver from LA. And so she's back in LA as of right now, and she has fully moved back, and I don't think she intends to come back to Vancouver for quite a long time. Obviously, it's a big move, and I think she just prefers LA. So the likelihood of her coming back all the way up to Canada, to Vancouver, to film more as Supergirl is very unlikely considering that she just left the role. So I would say give it a couple of years, and maybe she's going to look back on it more fondly. Say, like, what Stephen and Mel is doing right now. Yes, it hasn't been that long since Stephen finished, but it's been a decent chunk of time and he's already talking about maybe coming back and the idea of like if HBO Max picked up a Green Arrow show, he would come back for a limited series and a limited time. So if it's worth her time, I feel like Melissa would do the same and she might look back upon it and be like, oh, maybe we should actually go back to this because I love Supergirl and lots of people would obviously like to see that. But we don't have any answers as of right now, no confirmation if Melissa will ever come back, but I think that is still a chance and I wouldn't bet on it happening anytime in the next few years. Okay, so the next question comes from Fiction Master 101 who says, How can Supergirl and Stargirl meet and what brings the Flash to recruit in Batwoman, the Atom and Green Arrow? So we've talked about Supergirl meeting Stargirl, I don't think that's gonna actually happen and as we just literally discussed, Supergirl, I don't think she's gonna come back for a very long time, if ever. And in regards to the Flash recruiting all the people for the crossover, I believe Despero, the big threat of the crossover, is going to warrant all of these heroes being like, maybe I should show up to Central City and give the Flash a hand. I'm not sure if he's going to recruit all these specific heroes. I think it's probably a bit more likely that for most of them, they're going to just show up in the city and be like, okay, like I see you've got this big problem with Despero, so let me go help out. Or, on the other hand, there is a chance that Despero attacks one of the other heroes and that's where the Flash comes in and he saves that hero and that's how you get the crossover starting. So I think it can go either way in terms of like, is it the Flash that gets attacked or is it another hero like Batwoman, the Atom or Green Arrow being attacked? And the Flash realizes, oh shoot, I gotta come and I gotta help out. So. We'll have to wait and see, obviously there is lots of possibilities, we don't have any confirmation as to why and how he's going to show up and where he's going to show up. All of these answers will be coming to us probably as we head towards the crossover and we'll probably get some trailers and some promos and everything like that. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So Donovan Brandon on YouTube asks, will Diggle accept the ring on Supergirl? So Diggle is showing up in tonight's episode of Supergirl. We're obviously going to review it afterwards, so we'll have to wait and see. As of right now, my prediction is I don't think we're going to see him showing up as Green Lantern. From what I know, it seems like he's heavily involved in the Kelly side of the story and I know they have a couple of fight scenes together in the episode. I haven't seen any clues that he's going to be turning into Green Lantern this episode, he's going to get the ring. I think it's very unlikely because they've only teased it really on The Flash. His appearances on all the other shows were tiny cameos that really didn't mean anything at all. So I've got a feeling he's going to play a bigger role in tonight's episode, similar to The Flash. Maybe there are some more teasers about him becoming Green Lantern, but I really doubt he's going to full-on go Green Lantern. I think it's very unlikely, and I would be shocked if it happened, if I'm completely honest. Okay, so let's move on to the final question. A very simple question, but this comes from Xperia on YouTube who asks, Will Caramel be reunited? So I'm presuming this is about mon showing up in the finale because we saw some set photos recently that we covered that Chris Wood is back on the set and he was filming for at least the finale, potentially the penultimate episode of the series as well. So they are obviously going to meet again and 
I don't know the specific reason, they probably come back in time in order to help out with the threat that is going on. We have the return of Wynn as well, so I presume Monel and Wynn are going to come back in time together. But in regards to Caramel, so Kara and Monel being reunited and being back together, it's very likely, especially if that is the way that they want to end the show. And lots of people have been theorizing that the way that Supergirl leaves is she actually goes to the future with Monel, and then that's when they live their life happily ever after. And that is the best way to have Caramel back. And so I do think it's a high possibility. But if they choose to end the show in a different way and she's not going to the future, I think it's unlikely because I really do think Monel is going to go back to the future because that's where his destiny lies. And if Supergirl thinks her destiny lies there too, then yes, of course. But if she goes to someone like Argo, I'm not so certain. So I would say it's like a 80% chance that they get back together, but I think there's like a strong 20% chance that maybe she goes somewhere else by the end of the series. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any videos. And also, don't miss out on tonight's video. We're going to be covering the Diggle episode of Supergirl. My review will be posting right after the episode airs. But for now, click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.